Settling is not an option for Everything me. I desire is already mine. What if you can have it all? <laughs> because every day is for the girls. Hello, hello. Welcome back to another episode of For the Girls. I'm your host, Victoria Alario. And today's episode is so much fun. We're talking about dating and relationships with Alana Dunn, who is, well, you guessed it, a dating and relationships expert. She's also the host of Seeing Other People podcast. So some of you girls might know her. You might already be listeners of Seeing Other People. So if so, then you just know how amazing Alana is. And if you're not a listener of hers yet, if you've never heard heard of seeing other people then after this episode make sure to check it out because there is so much good content on there and be sure to subscribe and follow along because she actually interviewed me and that episode will be out in probably about two weeks so stay in the know with her content stay up to date and then you will be blessed <laughs> with an interview of Alana interviewing me on seeing other people coming out soon. And guess what? If anyone needs dating app inspo, this episode is for you because Alana is engaged to her fiance who she met through Hinge. Yes, it's real. You can get married. You can get engaged. You can have babies. You can do all the things with the guys that you are matching with on Hinge. So don't delete your profiles yet. But this conversation isn't only for the single girls who are hoping to meet somebody who are swiping through apps and going on all different dates. But it's even for those that are in relationships, especially those early dating stages, those who are constantly overthinking everything, running to the group chat, asking for advice, all that. By the time that you're done listening with this episode, you'll be learning exactly how to transform from being an anxious dater to feeling more secure within yourself, within your relationships, just in life in general. So this episode is for all the girls. I also just think most importantly, no matter what your relationship status is, I think this conversation will allow everyone to shift from a negative mindset around dating and men and relationships and all that to a really, really positive one. So I'm excited for you girls to hear this conversation. Also, this is the best announcement of this intro. This episode is not only for all the girls in general, but it's especially for the Jonas Brothers girls, okay? (laughs) Because we go on an entire Jonas Brothers tangent discussing wedding songs and all the things because we're just both obsessed with them. So let's get right into it. Okay, everyone, please welcome Alana to For the Girls. I'm very, very, very excited for this collab. Alana, introduce yourself to the girls. Okay. First of all, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Hi girls. I'm Alana Dunn. I am the host of Seeing Other People, which is a podcast about dating and relationships. And I also co-host the podcast Life in Progress with Carly Silverman. And Life in Progress is really all about everything we experience in our twenties from career to friendship, to dating, to just all of the growing pains with getting older. And so Other than that, I am a dating and relationships coach. I'm a content creator. I'm a dog mom and I'm getting married in June. Oh my God, June. I didn't realize it was so soon. It's coming up. The clock is ticking. (laughs) Okay. Is everything like done? Like now you're just, now it's just the countdown or? It's a never ending to-do list. Like I've never experienced anything like this. Everybody keeps saying like, oh, you've gotten all the big things done or like, oh, you'll get into a lull. I'm like, no, that has (laughs) not happened. I don't think that's going to happen, but I'm in a really good place with it where everything that's left, I like feel good about and I feel like I can have fun with it. Wow. Okay, cool, cool. And we'll also talk about her own relationship because they matched on freaking hinge girl. So if anybody needs some like motivation or inspo there, it works. But I want to talk about hinge in general as your experience with it, because that's where you started off. So I, with your career, let's put that out there with your yes. career. So I want to understand that, like, first of all, what made you even want to work there? And do you feel like working there, your experience on the back end side, like on the corporate side of, of Hinge actually helped you in your dating journey? Oh, I love that question. Okay. So to answer the first part of the question, how did I end up working there? I definitely did not set out to work at Hinge. I never set out to work in the dating space. I ended up working there or applying to this job there because my dating life was an absolute dumpster fire. I was more heartbroken than I knew was possible. I literally, I was working in the music industry and got my heart broken by a guy I worked with in Mm. the music industry. And I was like, I need to get 
as far away from this place as humanly possible. And I saw this role at Hinge, which was basically using all of the same skills like content creation on camera stuff that I was using. But instead of applying it to music, I was applying it to dating. And I was like, wow, if I could use what I know, my skills to help one single person not feel as terrible Mm -hmm. and heartbroken and lost and hopeless as I currently feel right now, how amazing would that be? And so I ended up getting this job at Hinge. My title when I started was video and content producer. I was running their social media. I became their lead content creator. I was like known as Alana from Hinge. Like people would come up to me in the streets and be like, oh my God, you're Alana from Hinge. Um, It was really, it became my identity. And I started a podcast there called Dating Sucks, which led to seeing other people. But it's funny you ask that. I learned so much about dating when I was working at Hinge from talking to users and from the research that was going on behind the scenes of how to make the app better and more impactful. But I think the biggest thing I learned that helped me with my dating life was there's this whole, not stigma around dating apps, but I think there's this whole energy out there about how much dating sucks and how like the dating apps are like ruining our lives and want to keep us on there forever. And That is a really daunting feeling and can make dating feel really impossible and really scary and really heavy. And what I learned from working at Hinge was every single person at that company was the most wonderful human being who just wanted to help people find love. Like Mm -hmm. we would get together on Fridays for our weekly all hands meeting and we would read out success stories and like celebrate the babies that were being made because of the relationships that formed. And I think knowing that no, the people at this company really want you to meet somebody and get off the app and never have to use it again. Like That's what success is to them. That made me feel a little more hopeful and a little more like, oh, this doesn't have to be the end of the world. And I can use this as a tool to get to where I want to go, but it's not out to get me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, it is actually, I kind of like weirdly, got the chills when you were saying like on Fridays we would read like success stories and things like that because I don't know like I get like emotionally like bonded to like love stories Mm -hmm. I feel like so that hearing that that end of it is like okay because half the time I think users are like what the fuck on this app like I don't understand like how they think like these are the people that I want to see in certain things but No, it just goes to show that like there's real people behind the scenes. It's not just like technology that just, you know, it's like, okay, we're going to put like apples and oranges together. No, it's people who are actually really wanting to see success stories. I am curious because you said your your podcast name previously was Dating Sucks and now it's seeing other people. I want to know how that transition happened. Did it come from you know, having such a positive experience at Hinge that you're like, wait, I don't really like resonate with this title of dating sucks. I would love to have seeing other people's names still be dating sucks. Um, I created (laughs) dating sucks. It was a Hinge podcast. So I was producing it and hosting Mm -hmm. it, but it was a Hinge project. And I ended up getting let go in November of 2020. And I had, so I could no longer do dating sucks, but I knew like I found this thing that I love to do that makes such an impact. And so I was like, I'm not applying to other jobs. Like I found the thing I'm going to go make it happen on my own. And seeing other people was one of like maybe 150 names in a note on my phone that I actually didn't love, but I put it to a poll and people kept voting for it. And I was like, oh, like, I don't like this name, but I guess I'll do it. And now I can't imagine it being named anything else. Oh my God. No, I love it. I love the name. I actually have thought about how like creative that name is. Like it's not easy to come up with a title for a podcast. It's so hard. I think if I ever had to come up with the name of a band, it would be the death of me. Like I I would spontaneously combust from indecision. I would not know what to do. <laughs> Speaking of, you know, the dating apps and Hinge and all that, like I said, you met your fiance on there, but prior to meeting him, did you have any like crazy dating stories or horror stories yourself? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I had a lot of horror stories. I Listen, I never went on like a comically terrible first date. I think I was good at dating, but I had a lot of pretty terrible relationship stories and relationship patterns. And I got myself into 
more situationships than I could count. I let people treat me way less than I deserved. And I think the biggest thing I ran into when I was dating was I would meet these guys. I I, I say that for half of my 20s, I dated the same guy in a different font. Mm -hmm. And every single one of those guys worked in the music industry and wanted to prioritize their career over their dating life or their personal life. And they all would go on a bunch of dates with me. And like we connected on a really deep level because I previously had worked in the music industry. And so I knew exactly what they were trying to do and things that other people wouldn't understand. Like I got and every single time we'd get to like date six, seven or eight or nine and a conversation would kind of come up, come up of like, where is this going? What are we doing? And every single time without fail, they would say to me verbatim, I really like you. I love hanging out with you. We have such a great connection. I'm not looking for anything serious right now, but I'm super down to keep hanging out if you're okay with that. Every time. No, I'm not. <laughs> well, Alana at 25 years old and 24 and 23 and 26, every single time she said, oh, well, he said he likes me. So of course he doesn't know me well enough to want to commit to me yet. Like, why would he want to date me yet? Like we just met a month ago. So challenge accepted. I'm going to make them want to date me. No, no, no. Learn from my mistakes. Do not do that. If somebody is not looking for the same thing as you walk away, choose yourself. You deserve so much more. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Listen, I think we've all been there. I will say opposite of you, unlike you, I don't even let them make it to date number two, let alone date number nine. It's like first yeah. date, first date. Are we clicking or are we not all the way? Nope. Okay. Bye. I want marriage and babies. No, <laughs> exactly. Out. It is so <laughs> important to talk about what you're looking for and what your intentions are Yeah. on the first date. And people are so afraid to do that. But I think talking about dating on dates is the best thing you can do. And it's yeah. the e quickest and easiest and most interesting path to actually learning about somebody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it really, it really is. And so by the time that you met your now fiance, you probably were like, like the, the gates of heaven opened. You're like, thank you for this. Yeah. I, I was ready to not continue to break my own heart and, and get my, heartbroken yeah uh, so wait is it true that this was like a Jonas Brothers connection because I feel like I heard yes. this yes it is yeah um <laughs> so the reason I wanted to work in music was because I was absolutely obsessed with the Jonas Brothers every single inch of my bedroom my walls my ceiling my bedding every single thing was Jonas Brothers and I was like bullied for being the weird Jonas Brothers girl. But I wanted to work in music because I had felt such a deep connection to them. And they had helped me through so much in my childhood that I was like, I want to help people fall in love with music the same way I did by feeling really connected to their favorite bands. And so that's what I set out to do. Obviously, it didn't end up happening that way. But I it, the Jonas Brothers have stuck with me through my entire life. And I had a prompt in my Hinge profile, which hint, hint, put things in your dating app profiles that actually matter to you. Even if mm -hmm. you think they sound weird, somebody's going to like you for it. I had a prompt in my profile about how much I love the Jonas Brothers. And my now fiance, Jake, messaged me and said, I also love the Jonas Brothers. And we've now been to nine Jonas Brothers concerts together. We will be dancing to the Jonas Brothers as our first dance at our wedding we met the Jonas Brothers together. We were on the Kiss Cam in December at one of their concerts. It truly like brought us together and connected us. And it, it's so silly. The chills are back. First of <laughs> all, I'm obsessed with the Jonas Brothers too. So like, yes, I also was that girl poster. I didn't yeah, even yes. have paint left on my wall. Yes. I would sit out for Good Morning America like overnight. Wait, campaign. I'm freaking out. Were you on Team Jonas? There what was there, like online fan club that you had to pay for. Oh, no, I was on Miley World. Oh, nice. <laughs> I was only allowed to pay for one. <laughs> I, yes, I was on Miley World. And oh. we did used to get like amazing tickets to- yeah. Like, concerts because we would have like the pre-sale thing I was like that that was like my era does anybody know your what first dance song or can I like guess or is it a secret I don't know that it's a secret it's what there were two we were debating between you can guess okay I'm gonna guess between when you look me in the eyes and hesitate is like new vibes to that 
Am I wrong? Am I right? It's one of those. It is one of those. It's one of those. Okay. Okay. You know what? Whatever. This is for the girls. I will. <laughs> let's give the girls what they want. So I want right after we kiss, like during the ceremony, I want it to explode in the bridge of love bug and go like, now I'm speaking. Yeah. And then the procession yes. like us walking back down the aisle, going out like to that, having that like halfway down the aisle kiss moment. People are like throwing rose petals on us. Okay. So that's going to be like iconic. And then our first dance is going to be when you look me in the eyes. Ah, I'm like (laughs) dying. First of all, I do love the love bug moment. Like I I think after that, like big big drop, like that's when like, you know, again, full chills are back. (laughs) I am obsessed with fly with me. Like that's my like, just in love so when i went to the jonas brothers concert in august um that was so that was the first time that i went like in forever because i was their first like comeback like yeah you know tour whatever so when i went i made i curated like a playlist for my boyfriend because unlike yours he is not <laughs> a, a jonas brothers guy you gotta I train wish, him gotta put I the training wheels was. on yeah. so i made him a playlist of like the really like good songs like for relationships you know like hesitate love bug when you look me in the eyes fly with me whatever a whole bunch of things so i think it was like 13 songs whatever and he wrote back to me fly with me is my favorite song and i was like oh keep him yeah i text him at all costs oh my god i was so happy i was like i cannot believe you just said that because like that's that's my song wait maybe i didn't even think about that ah that's gotta play at some point yeah oh my god you know how many (laughs) times that i have youtube searched or googled like fly with me wedding version like fly with me slow version because like i would i really want to try to make fetch happen here and make that my song but like it is like not really the right like beat for like a first dance song i've seen people do upbeat first dance songs so and it's fun yeah it's fun it we we have this amazing giant expensive band that we hired and we're both like yeah the band can't do that like we need them to like plug in an aux and like hit play on the actual Jonas Brothers singing it like it's so funny we keep having moments like that we're like no we need the Jonas Brothers oh my god first of all you also just like I'm getting ahead of myself here but you just made me so happy because I really want a band for my wedding I am not engaged yet but I really want a band for my wedding. And say, what you just said validated everything I needed to hear because I've been having like a few panic moments of like, but there's certain songs that like, I don't want a band to sing. Like I yeah. want to hear the real thing. So is that a thing they could actually play the song? Uh, hopefully. You're going to find out. So. Listen, more breaks for them. Why not? Yeah. They can get paid to stand there if I get that, what I want. That's what I'm thinking. Like if I want a song to be like my first dance song or yeah. even like my dance with my dad, I'm like, I don't want they do the that. band they do that. to sing it. Like I want the real thing. Okay. Yeah, they will okay. do that. Good to know. Good to know. I'm going to keep that in, the, in the files. Anyway, I'm so glad we just had that Jonas Brothers moment. <laughs> and quite frankly, we could just scratch everything else and keep talking about the Jonas Brothers. Twist my arm. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but going back to now, all right, you connect with your now fiance on Hinge. I really want to talk about this experience because this is where a lot of girls, like they lose it. Like they don't really get to pursue and further a relationship because of all these rules and different things that come to be with dating. And like you said, stigmas and dating sucks and whatnot. So I feel like when it comes to dating, dating apps or just dating in general, like I said, there are so many rules on what to do or even worse, like what not to do. What is your take on all of that? How did you really succeed in finding this relationship through the dating app? I think I spent so much time when I was single trying to follow these rules and do what my friends were doing or do what an influencer was saying was the right way to date. And I kept finding myself feeling really uncomfortable when I would make those decisions or I would say something that somebody else would tell me to say. I would write something that someone else would tell me to write and I would like feel it in my gut like this is not authentic to Alana. Mm. This is not who I am, but they're saying like, this is the right way to do it. So I guess like, let's do the right way. Cause what I, the decisions I've made haven't gotten me very far, but I've learned. And similarly to, you just talked about this in your social media episode. It really like, you cannot do what someone else is doing just because 
they're making it sound cool or they're saying, well, this is what worked for me. Because guess what? We're all different people. You and I have had completely different relationship experiences, dating experiences, friendship experiences, life experiences, and all of those impact how we connect with other people, how we build trust, how we peel back our own layers and open up and feel comfortable and safe with somebody. And so what works for me isn't necessarily going to work for you. It's what works for you isn't necessarily going to work for the eight girls in your group chat or for your favorite influencer. And so I think the biggest thing I learned and what helped me find success was leaning into wholeheartedly dating in a way that felt authentic to me. And that was not following dating rules. That was saying, it's okay. If I want to text somebody first, I can text them first. If I want to confirm the date because it's five o'clock and I haven't heard from them, I don't want to sit here with this pit of anxiety in my stomach anymore, waiting for them, just staring at my phone every time it buzzes, being like, is it them? Are they going to finally confirm? Mm -hmm. When guess what? I'm fully capable of picking up the phone and writing a text saying, hey, are we still on for tonight? And I chose to take my dating life into my own hands instead of sitting back and letting dating happen to me. And I think that completely changed the way I felt about dating, the way I approached every day, and is absolutely the reason that I am now engaged and getting married to my best friend in the world and somebody that I feel so safe and comfortable and joyful with. Wow. Wow. I First of all, it is so true. And I even personally have not to say like mixed feelings, but like back and forth. There's so many times where I put out a video or a podcast episode where I literally say, I'm like, I don't know how many ways to make this disclaimer, like do what works for you. Like, because, you know, I give advice and, and I, I do believe, you know, for at least for me that like when I have this certain set of standards, there are certain things that I just won't allow. And so in dating, those would be my rules. Now, when I say that in the videos and then girls follow up with like, what do I do about this? Or what do I say about that? I'm like, but what do you want to do? Like, yes. you have to trust yourself. Like, I could tell you what I would do. Absolutely. But if that's not what clicks with you, like, so I feel like I'm always constantly trying to like come from a grounded place too and say like, but you a hundred percent of the time have to make choices based on, you know, how you feel and just what works for you. And I think that you talk a lot about like feeling safe and secure. All of that is extremely, extremely important. And so, so many girls, instead of trusting themselves and really leaning into that, like safety and security, they go to their friends, like you just said, like what somebody else says to say or what somebody else says to do. So what is your take on that, on people just not even making their own decisions in dating and more or less just like relying on the group chat? It's so hard. And I get it. And I've done it. And we want validation. We want to know that people think we're making good choices. But you have to realize that, first of all, if you're asking eight people or even three people, for their opinion, everyone might have a different opinion, which is only going to confuse you more and make you even less confident in whatever mm. decision you go with. And then you might have regrets and you might think, oh, well, what if I said that? Or what if I had played it cool instead of asking them out or instead of following up? And that's the problem with getting so many opinions. And that's honestly the problem with social media <laughs> and mm -hmm. following so many different people and trying to take in all of the advice and all of the do this, don't do that. Like, this is the way you have to do it. That's the way you can't do it. Or this is the only way to find your person, et cetera, et cetera. But I think here's the thing. I think really the more you know yourself and the more you trust yourself, that's going to be your biggest power or like your secret weapon. And that's a really hard thing to do, but it's just paying attention to what feels good. Like, Learning who you are is not that deep. It's like, what do I enjoy? <laughs> what makes me feel good? What doesn't feel good? And also learning from experiences that you have. So let's say you waited around for some, for, okay, so my first day with Jake, let's say you waited around until five o'clock and he never confirmed the date. And so you were like, okay, you know what? Like this doesn't fly with me. I, because XYZ person said they have to confirm the date by 12. So I'm going to cancel and tell him that I made other plans because I didn't hear from him. And let's say 
you get a response from them being like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I had a really busy day at work. Like was really excited for tonight. Totally understand. Like we could do it another time. And then you feel shitty about that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Take note that you feel shitty that you listen to what somebody said and tried that out. And it's okay that you tried that out, but just know that, hey, okay, maybe I didn't, I should have waited or I could have just said, hey, are you still good for tonight? Instead of jumping to that conclusion, taking that action. And then next time you can just confirm or just ask if they're still on. So I think it's a matter of trial and error, but really paying attention to how things make you feel is what's going to help you figure out what is right and wrong. And I think the other thing that I would really encourage people to do is don't overthink dating so much. Like, trust me, I was the queen of overthinking and spiraling and driving my own anxiety like into the freaking ground and off the roof. Like it can be so stressful, but it doesn't have to be. And the advice I would give to my younger self is just text these people, talk to these people as if you were talking to your best friend. And you don't have to ask your whole group chat, hey, how should I respond to Allie? Because you know how you would respond to Allie because you and Allie have been friends forever. And in theory, this person would end up becoming your best friend. So just treat them as a friend and don't overthink every single thing you're going to say and just send the text. Wow. I love that's actually such. I think what a lot of people I just said, I just started three different sentences at once, by the way, that that's how much you just said that just my mind went in five different places. I, I tend to like talk too much that there's so much to respond <laughs> <No>. to. <laughs> Don't worry. I'm a rambler. So I love it. But I think that what people forget in dating is that like the person on the other's like line is also just a person, right? Like, yes. and we're all doing this for the first time. Like, and I don't necessarily mean dating for the first time, but we're all experiencing each other for the first time. So like, it's just as much your first time talking to me as it is my first time talking to you. So like, I don't necessarily need to feel like anxious and crazy speaking to you as if you've talked to me 500 times before. No, it's equally your first experience with me. So we're genuinely just human beings communicating with each other. And you have no problem walking into a store and communicating with the person at the store, or like you said, talking to your best friend, or even like your classmates, your coworkers, your teachers, like you're communicating with human beings on a different level, like on, on all different levels every single day. Then when it comes down to someone you just happen to meet through a dating app, it's like our brain turns into mush. Like, yeah. I don't know how to speak to anybody. Yeah. And we put so much pressure on, well, this has to work. And we've already tried on their last names with our first names and they've sounded good. So we're like, okay, this is the one I'm so sick of dating. I never want to go on a first date again. This has to be my last first date. I have to do everything perfectly, but nobody's perfect. Like, first of all, you're not perfect. You're not expecting them to be perfect, but yeah, stop putting people you've never met or have met once or twice or three times on a pedestal because, and I actually think that this is really important for girls to hear I have men, guys, boys, whatever you want to call them on my podcast all the time. And I have a lot of male listeners and you guys, they are just as anxious as we are. They are just as nervous. They really want to find their person too. They're overthinking also like we need to stop being like that guy is the coolest guy on the planet who has no fears and no stresses and no worries. And I need them to like me. No, they're just as anxious. They're just as excited to meet you. And they also like guys get their hearts broken too. Guys struggle in dating too. We need to stop looking at guys as these like invincible, untouchable things that we need to win over. Mm -hmm. I actually have a good like tidbit to add in here too. Speaking of anxiousness and whatnot especially you know in those whether it's like the first date like just the early dating stages you know with my now boyfriend um he okay so when we got set up it was of course already after the fact that I had I did have years of like going on dating apps and I did go out with all different guys and you know first dates some second but like I rarely even ever went on like third or fourth fourth dates because like if I just knew this wasn't going to be the guy I married then like I just really didn't waste any further time but after like one or two dates like there's always that like little bit of disappointment or little like feelings that you know kind of 
rewire your brain to become so used to disappointment or bailing or not hearing from someone like you mentioned like you know it's five o'clock on the day like a date you have planned at seven o'clock and you still haven't heard from somebody like I, I had gone through so much of that before that by the time that I met my now boyfriend that was kind of programmed in my head so I was a bit of an anxious dater myself and so what I had to do to like get out of that was tell myself and mind you this is not going to apply to everybody if somebody doesn't make you feel 100 percent safe and secure but you'll relate because your fiance does but for me like i had to tell myself he's never given me a reason to feel this way he's never made me doubt him meaning like okay every time we had plans he never canceled he always confirmed he always followed up he was always on time he was never late he never made me feel like he didn't want to go he always was looking forward to it confirmed picked me up on time the whole thing like everything was always consistent and a positive experience so say that it's like the third date because this was like genuinely what i was going through and i did and it's like four o'clock it's say we he you know text me good morning whatever and then the whole afternoon i didn't hear from him and it's four o'clock and i'm like my mind where is he is he dead yeah. does he hate me is it over? my I'm mind would instantly go to Every the time. fact that we're off my mind yeah. was like he's bailing like i i hate that guys are like this he's bailing he could have just told me blah 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 and then he would literally text me oh my god i just got out of work uh you know uh, it was my phone was in my work truck all day like blah 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 i left my phone in my work truck during lunch and you know i just got back in the car and now i'm like Oh, like, and then you feel so silly for like how worked up you get over it or how anxious you get over it. And some of us naturally maybe have a little bit of anxiety. So maybe um, that does come very naturally to us. However, I also think we can reprogram the reprogramming that's already happened. We can like deprogram, we can unprogram, we can unlearn certain things. And that's what I would do. I would just tell myself at that time, like, but he's never given me a reason to doubt him or he's never given me a reason to feel this way. Trust that. Trust his consistent consistency, trust his actions, like trust the fact that like he always shows up. And that was what I would do. Do you have any like certain tips or whatnot that you could say helped you transform from an anxious dater to someone in a, you know, secure relationship. Absolutely. And and I love everything you just said. I think that was a huge part of my transformation too. And, you know, sometimes it's easy to do it on your own and other times it's not. And I, as you were explaining it, I, it just took me back to like conversations I would have with one of my best friends, Sarah, where we would take turns kind of when we were in a situation saying to each other, like, you know, I, I haven't heard from him, like what's going on. Do we think it's over? And we didn't the what i want to emphasize is like this was me and one person choosing to make each other a person for this it wasn't every single time i'm not hearing from him i'm going to text five different friends to just talk everyone's ears off and vent and feel heard and you know have it occupy my mind even more because i think that's actually like a bad thing to do because then you're hyping it up even more you're talking about it more it's all you can think about but i had this one friend where we would be able to kind of ground each other in the fact that exactly what you said it's like well, he's never bailed on you before. He's always ended up following up. Like you knew this was going to be a busy week at work. You have no reason not to trust him. He's never given you any reason. And so having one friend to confide in and kind of put you, not put you in your place, but remind you like, and shake you and be like, Hey, like everything's actually okay. You panicked last week. The same thing happened and you had the best night ever with him. So I think that was really helpful. Another thing is realizing, because also like similar to you, like I had bad experiences that made me think, well, now every experience is going to be like this, but Mm -hmm. I had been cheated on. And so that really messed with my head and brought out more anxiety than I ever knew was possible in this little brain up here or big brain. Um, And so I, anytime I would not hear from somebody that I was interested in on a Thursday, Friday or Saturday night, if I didn't hear from them for like five minutes, even my immediate gut thought was, well, this person's with another girl. They're on a date. They're hooking up with somebody because they're not answering me. And because that's what was happening when I was being cheated on. And I would, you know, go sleep over at a guy's place and I would see a hair on the pillow and I'd be like, is that my hair? I don't know if that's my strand of hair or not. I'd be like comparing it to the color of my hair. And there's like, (laughs) it's like 50 shades of brown in here. Like, you know, but 
it it was really hard for me to trust people and to trust myself and my gut. And what I had to learn over time was I'm walking into a dating situation or a relationship or a situationship even. I'm walking in there assuming and hoping that this person's given me a clean slate and is going to take everything I say and do at face value and not put their past experiences and the girls who have screwed them over before they're not going to like put that onto me. They're letting me be me. And so why should I do anything different? Like just because one guy did something to me doesn't mean that every single other guy in the world is going to do that. And until this person gives me a reason not to trust them, yeah, I could have my guard up, but I should trust what they say and not immediately be like, oh, they're not responding to me for 10 minutes jail. Like they're cheating on me. Because that's not fair to them. You know, we're hoping that people give us a clean slate when we go out with them. We should be giving them one too. And I think another thing, even when I did meet Jake and we started seeing each other and we were even like boyfriend and girlfriend at this point, I remember feeling like this is too good to be true. This is going so well. Something bad's about to happen. And I spent probably the first like six, seven, eight, nine months of our relationship just waiting for the other shoe to drop. Because that's all I knew. And you can't like you can't live your life like that. Sometimes things will work out. And that's not to say everything is perfect in our relationship and our lives. But sometimes things actually will work. And you have to trust in that. Yeah. Sometimes things just actually work out (laughs) like crazy, (laughs) crazy, right? Yeah. What a concept that things that we want to happen can actually happen. Yeah. No, it's so true. And I love, you know, how you phrase that and how how you put that into perspective, because I think a lot of girls get so used to the letdown and so used to the disappointment that when things are going right, they get like imposter syndrome. And I think that I dealt with that myself as well after, you know, I was single all of my 20s. I literally had boyfriends in high school. And then after that, never had a serious relationship, like never had a committed relationship. I dated guys. I had like short term things like, yeah, I was exclusive, quote unquote, Mm -hmm. with guys. And there was like some minor commitment there, but never like the real title, never like progressing and being, you know, intertwining our lives. You know, it was like we had two separate lives. And then we also like had each other but we never like actually became a union like we never like you know connected in that way and it would last maybe three five six months seven months but like that was really that so when you have those experiences back to back to back to back and no serious commitment no like true um growth in a relationship and then you get into one like that could really create like something in your head like that imposter syndrome of like like you said, waiting for the other shoe to drop, like, all right, when is this going to stop working out? And then at some point, it just becomes nine months and 10 months. And then in a year, then you're like, wait, like, yep. this is happening. Like, this is really a thing. Um, and I would say that is probably the best feeling like that's to know that like, oh, I don't have to suffer like I don't have to constantly experience like such negativities and low lows like I can actually experience like the good stuff and the highs like that that is why you keep dating to look forward to that like that is why you keep going even when things might seem hard or confusing like just know that that's on the other end of all of it and it's it really is like the best feeling yeah 100 percent and enjoy it. Like Mm -hmm. even when you're questioning yourself, even when you're waiting for the other shoe to drop, even when you're having doubts of like, could this really be as good as it is? It let yourself enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Dating, falling in love, forming a relationship with someone. These are such incredible things that we get to do where if you think about it, like dating is actually a new thing in human history where like this time, a hundred years ago, or even like 80 years ago, 70 years ago, people weren't dating. They would just meet somebody or even in some cultures, you don't get to fall in love. You're just told you're going to marry this person and you've never even met them before, or you've met them once, you know nothing about them, but you're being told this is who you're going to be with, or it makes sense for the two of you to be together. So suddenly you're together. We get to actually date, meet so many different people, learn about ourselves in the process, try new activities, go new places, laugh so much. 
and have fun with it where we get to choose like, oh, I do want to continue getting to know this person because I feel great when I'm with them and Mm -hmm. it's so exciting and I look forward to seeing them again. And we get to keep doing that until we find the person that it actually works with and we both feel like, wow, we could build this relationship. And Mm -hmm. it's just so cool and special when you think about the fact that we get to do that. Dating shouldn't be like, oh, I have to date even though I'm miserable right now because I need to date so I can find my person, not be alone forever. Like, no, we get to date. We get to have these experiences. We get to find somebody that we can't imagine our lives without. And sometimes it takes longer than we want. But in hindsight, there's always a reason why it didn't work out with that person that you swore it should have worked out with. And like you will end up with the person you're supposed to end up with at the time that you're supposed to meet them. And it doesn't have to be this terrible, horrible weight on our shoulders. Like it really just should be fun and Mm -hmm. special. I absolutely love that. And I think especially the early stages of dating, which everybody dreads that first date, that second date, that really, we really need to approach that with a much more positive mindset. And I love your take on like making it fun. So how would you say that girls can approach, you know, that first date with a more like fun, you know, mindset involved? Yeah, I love that you're hitting on mindset because I think it, first of all, a lot of it is about mindset. It's you know, making sure you have the right pump up playlist or the friend you call that, you know, is going to put you in a good mood when you're walking to the date. I did both those. I would always listen to music. Like I literally had like a pre-date playlist on my Spotify that I would listen to when I was on the subway. And then as I would get out of the subway and I'd have like a five minute walk to the place, I would call Christina and I'd be like, Christina, tell me it's going to be okay. She's like, Alana, don't be nervous. Like you're always nervous. And it always ends up being so fun. You call me or text me after being like, that was the best. Like, it's going to be great. You're going to be great. And you look great. Like you feel great, you know? So whether it's a pump up playlist or a friend, or maybe it's taking a bath before to put you in a relaxed mood, I think start off. Like you don't want to rush from a meeting at work or a presentation right to the date, because then you're still in work mode. You're still in like high stress mode. You want to put yourself into like relax have a good time mode. So I think that is really important to just set the stage of like turning your brain to, okay, we're going to enjoy ourselves now. And then I think whether it's making sure that the actual date itself is at a place. And yes, this means you might have to make a suggestion or Mm -hmm. assist in making the date plan. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. They don't have to do everything. You can take initiative too. But whether it's going to a place that maybe there's a new cocktail bar in your neighborhood that you've been really excited to check out, go to that place. Maybe there's a drink that you haven't tried before. Try that drink. Maybe you've never talked to somebody on a date about this thing that you did in seventh grade that was really embarrassing. Like trying new things on dates is a great way to come out of the date. Whether the date is positive or a negative experience, you still come out of the date overall having learned something, having tried something new, having gained something. And I really like to encourage people to think about dating and a bad date, not as a waste of time, because you still learned there's something about the person that you didn't like, or you don't see vibing with the lifestyle that you want, or you still got to like, maybe the date wasn't good, but you still got to try a new place or you crossed a food item at a restaurant that you've been to before, but you never tried that thing and you really wanted that dish, you cross that off the list. So even if the date doesn't go well, there's still so much to take out of dating and to take into your next dating experience. And so I really encourage everybody to think of dating not as a good date or a bad date, but to after the date reflect and say like, what was the win of this date? What Mm -hmm. win can I take away? And you will realize that there are dating wins everywhere Mm -hmm. in dating, even on the worst of dates. Yeah. Wow. We are so aligned. One thing that I do with my coaching clients after the weekend, like on Mondays, I do check-ins and I'll ask them of the weekend, what is your win or your lesson? And it's, there's no such thing as a loss. Like there's no such thing as a fail. It's like your win or a lesson, meaning like, okay, you could have had something really, really, really positive, great fun happen, or maybe something not so great happened. But instead of looking at it from the lens of like, this was a fail, it's like, well, what did you get out of it? Because ultimately, you had to learn something from it. And so I think that like, even if you're fighting with your boyfriend, it could be like, you know, I learned this weekend, like, how much more I need to like tap into my patients, like certain things of that sort. It's like, you could find the positive in the negative. And I think with dating, 
you have to be able to see it like from that way. Otherwise you're going to think like I've wasted so much time. Mm -hmm. And for me, like it was really easy for me to think negatively and feel like I wasted so much time on all these dates. Like by the time that I met my boyfriend, like we didn't meet through a dating app. And so there were definitely times where I'm like, I can't believe how much time I wasted on dating apps and blah, blah, blah. But like ultimately all of that taught me and prepped me and helped me. Like by the time that I, you know, met him, like, I feel like all of those quote unquote, like bad dates taught me like everything, like of what, what works for me, what doesn't work for me, what feels right for me, what doesn't feel right for me. So it's almost like you have to do it even just for practice, (laughs) you know, like just, just, this is like rehearsal for when you meet your guy. (laughs) Absolutely. Like think about it. You can't just show up on race day and run a marathon. Mm -hmm. You have to train for that marathon for weeks, months, sometimes years. You might try to run a marathon and fail, not fail, but you might not make it across the finish line, but at least you've tried. You might sign up for a 5k at first or a 10k or a half and realize, okay, maybe I wasn't ready for that. I'm going to go back to the drawing board. Maybe I need to do more strength training this time instead of just running. There's so much that you pick up along the way and there's trial and error and there's learning from your mistakes and there's trying again with certain people even. And even if it doesn't work out, it's all a part of your journey and it Mm -hmm. all is leading you to where you will end up. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. So we have two things to wrap this up with. One, we have a Dear Victoria submission, which I'm really excited to get into with you. But last, I just want to get one little like last final piece of juicy advice, some insight, whether it be, you know, and you decide. So whether it be what's the most common mistake that people make in dating or what's one thing that you wish people knew about or did more of in dating. So what would you say your your final like hurrah comes to mind uh, that you can help the girls out with today? And then we'll get into the Dear Victoria submission. Stop making assumptions. We think that that person can read our minds and that they know exactly what we want when we want it. We think that they know that we want to be communicated to an X way. And if they're not doing it, well, they're lazy or they're not serious. They just don't care. Or if they're not bringing you flowers, if they're not, you know, confirming the date in the morning, if they're not texting you between dates, well, it's because they don't want to. They don't know that you don't. They They don't know that you want them to. Mm -hmm. We need to stop assuming that the person on the other side of our dating situation can read our minds because we can't read their minds. And the only way they're going to know what we want and what we need is to communicate that. And it's okay to communicate your needs. Having needs doesn't make you needy. And if it does, well, then we're all needy because we all have needs and we all need to feel more comfortable. We need to force ourselves to be comfortable in sharing that because the basis of any relationship is communication. And if you're just going to sit there and assume all day long that this person knows exactly what you want and what you need and what's on your mind, you're never going to get into a relationship. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. I love that. I have podcast episodes talking about that. TikTok's talking about that. Like that is one of my biggest things is communication. And I will say like, I pride myself on being a good communicator or even if, even if you don't want to say a good communicator, a direct communicator. Some people might say they don't like the way I communicate, but in my in my mind, like I'm like at at least I make it clear, like what works for me, what doesn't. Like I always make sure to put it out there, um, even aside from just like relationships and dating. I, I just think that like like you said, people are not mind readers, but also what people have to what a lot of girls who are dating need to understand is that. Everyone has different values, different morals, different love languages, which is a whole yes. other topic. Um, like you said, different needs, different standards, different desires, different wants. Like, so, you know, you might connect with somebody and be like, he's all great, this and that. But say, say, like you said, he doesn't, you know, get you flowers or whatnot. You need to express then that like gift giving and that thoughtfulness, that's a love language for you. Mm-hmm. And to receive in that way you know, that really like tickles your fancy, you know, like that's like a love language that's very important to you. And, and everybody has their own thing, but they're real. They're not going to know unless you give them a little bit of guidance, you know, it's, it, it it doesn't, not only does it not make you needy, but I think it doesn't make you, uh, it's, you're not asking for anything that's too much. It's just, you, 
you know what feels right in your heart. And so you're simply asking for like your heart to feel good. You know, you just want to feel that safety and security, like you mentioned so much in, in throughout the episode. Yeah. And ex- I love that you brought up love languages because if you think about it, like we, this person might not be bringing you flowers because maybe they brought their ex flowers and their ex actually really didn't like getting flowers or maybe their ex's love language is words of affirmation. So they're giving you all these words of affirmation and repeatedly telling you how much they like you. And you feel uncomfortable by that. You're not used to that. You don't like it. And you're getting the ick. They don't know that. They don't Mm -hmm. know that that's not something that you want. Like you have to share these things. You have to be open. You have to ask them how they want to be loved and how they want to be treated too. It's like, we, we got to (laughs) stop making things up and being like, well, this person did this or didn't do this. So they're not it or this won't work. Like you have to give people the opportunity to show up for you in the way that you need. Yeah. Men are not mind readers. They are certainly not. Um, I say that all the time. Not to go off on another tangent, but like one thing that's always just kind of like annoyed me with what like girls like email me or comment me on TikTok and tell me is like when they, um, let's use um, splitting the bill on the first date when they offer something and a guy takes the offer and then they're like jail annoyed. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, well, you offered, like, did Mm -hmm. you think like, were you playing a game? Were you setting him up? Like, were you just testing him to see like, if he would say no, because you know, you didn't have to offer if you didn't want him to do it. So why test him? You know, guys are so such simple creatures. He probably was like, Sure. Like what a right, nice like, offer. Oh, she wanted to. So yeah, like I'm what a gonna... nice offer. He, sure. Right. Of course, because what it like, you I, know, it... I recently had a conversation with someone, Jordana Drazen. Um, she's the daily Schwitz on social. If you guys know her, but she had said that with her now boyfriend, Jack, their first date, they were friends before. So she went into their date. They, she didn't know if it was a date. She's like, okay, if he pays, like I'm going to offer to pay, but if he says no and he pays, then this is a date. If he allows me to split the bill, then this is not a date. And he was there thinking, well, if she offers to pay, then this isn't a date. If she doesn't <laughs> offer to pay, then this is a date. And so she offered to pay. He said yes. And they both spent the rest of like a, like a few weeks and months thinking, oh, well, that wasn't a date, even Their though they both logic, really liked like, each other. Went against it, each other. Yeah. So you never know. Like it just got to communicate and like ask questions and stop trying to play it like a game. Like dating is not a game. And if you're playing it, you're going to lose. Yeah. Yeah. Well, speaking of all of that communication and whatnot, that's perfect to segue into the dear Victoria segment, because that's what this is all about. So for those of you listening who don't know, I take submissions from listeners. You can email me. It is victoria.forthegirlspodcast at gmail.com. Just make sure that you make the subject say, Dear Victoria, and you could send something that you need need advice on or just like a general topic that you want me to get into, whatever is on your mind at the moment. And I'm going to have Alana answer the one that I just got recently because I thought this was a perfect one for our relationship expert here. So it says... I'm over the moon with my boyfriend of just over a year. We have learned so much from one another. We continue to grow together, but I am worried about one of my boyfriend's friends and I just feel like he's a bad influence despite him having a wife and baby. I feel like he's still very much immature and not the kind of man that I would like to be surrounded by. The way that he talks about other people derogatorily, name calling, staying up late. He plays video games all night instead of helping his wife with the baby. So this girl's boyfriend and this guy keep in touch over social media and they play video games with each other since they live across the country. So they are not local to each other. They're not going out on Friday night. When we first started dating, my boyfriend opened a DM from this friend and it was an image of a woman's bosom, which I think that's boobies, right? (laughs) Bosom in a bra. My boyfriend obviously didn't think that that's what it would be. So when he opened it in front of me, we saw that and it was just all around uncomfortable and You know, um, I told him to tell his friend to stop sending things like that. And he said that he would. Fast forward now, a year later, he opened another DM from this friend while we were sitting in bed together. So she saw this one as well. And it was a thirst trap video of Dua Lipa. It wasn't like it was that bad of a video, but it brought back those feelings of what happened last time. And it rubbed me the wrong way because it told me either one, he never told his friend to stop sending those things like he said he would, or two, he did tell him, but the friend just simply does not care. My boyfriend's re- reaction was uh, apologetic. 
I didn't find the means to be angry with him since it wasn't his fault. He didn't know that he was going to get it. But to me, um, a person with BPD and learning to be less reactive and less jealous feels like there is something more that I need to say or do. I already told my boyfriend that the company a person keeps is telling of their character. And now, you know, I strongly dislike his friend, but I can't make them stop being friends because that's so controlling and wrong. So is there anything that I can really say or do at this point? Do I just need to put on my big girl pants and work on my confidence? Okay. I, you read that really well. I think what I would say is first and foremost, like, this isn't something that your boyfriend directly is doing. Like he is not making these actions. It sounds like his friend is a really big loser. It also doesn't sound like they're that close. Great. They live across the country. They don't see each other. They're just like passive friends that DM sometimes and play video games. So that's like the best case scenario for this type of situation where there's a friend that you don't like, or you don't feel like they're a good role model or or could potentially be a bad influence. I think you, this person mentioned that they're working on being less reactive. And I think what would be important, because obviously this is bothering you. I'm not going to say like, don't worry about it or just brush it off. It's no big deal because it's a big deal to you. And I want to make sure you feel validated because if it's bothering you, then it matters. And I'm sure that your boyfriend would also feel the same way. Like he wants to know what's going on in your mind and, and what you're upset about. You have to work through things together. What I would say is bring it up, but in a way where you can say something like, listen, I don't want this to be a huge thing, but it has been on my mind. And so I feel like I should bring it up and I'm trying to kind of process how I feel about it. And I don't want to be like attacking you in this because I'm not, but I do feel really uncomfortable about the DMs that Joe was sending you. And I know I brought it up to you the first time it happened and you said you would talk to him about it. I trust that you did, but it's a little upsetting that he hasn't changed his behavior, that he's still sending them. I I'm the, I don't want to accuse you of anything or say that you can't be friends with this person because that's not my place. But I just wanted to express that it does make me feel uncomfortable. And like, can we talk about maybe what we can do about that together? And approaching it as not like you versus him, but it's the two of you versus the problem. Mm -hmm. The problem is that you feel uncomfortable about his friend's actions and behavior. Okay. And so he, first of all, needs to know that because he probably has no idea. And second of all, it's working on a solution together. Maybe he just won't open the DMs from his friend anymore, you know, because maybe he did say, hey, Joe, stop sending me those. It's like weird or I don't want them. And Joe doesn't care or Joe's not thinking into it much. So Joe's still doing it. I think recognizing like the situation could be way worse. Like it's not your boyfriend liking these or following all these accounts. Um, This person, Joe doesn't live right next to you guys. It's not like you're hanging out all the time and he's surrounded by this bad behavior, but it is still something that is bothering you. So it is important to talk about. I don't think there's, I don't think your relationship is broken. I don't think this is going to turn into a huge fight, but I do think just having an honest conversation about how it makes you feel And maybe figuring out why it makes you feel that way too and and talking through that with them could be helpful. Yeah. I mean, I think the one trait that I think is going to be really important in your boyfriend to have here is to be just considerate, you know, to have consideration. Uh, And if he has that, then this should be an easy problem to solve because I don't think it will be as simple as, like she says at the end, like maybe I should just put on my big girl pants and be more confident in myself I don't think that the problem is that like Dua Lipa makes you feel insecure. You know, yeah, like that's not no. that's not the issue at hand. The issue is that like it makes you uncomfortable that photos or videos of any woman is being sent to your boyfriend with clearly not the best of intentions because I would hope that my husband and father of my children is not sending for like this girl probably doesn't even know that her husband does that or if she does I mean I I don't know but like I would hope that my partner isn't going to be the one doing that so the fact of the matter is like something really uncomfortable is happening on one end and it's being sent to your your partner and if you can even express to him your own, your own, like, like Alana just said, figure out why it makes you feel that way. So if you could clearly articulate and express to him why it makes you feel that way, 
then if he is, like I said, a considerate person, then he'll be able to take that into consideration, take your feelings Mm -hmm. into consideration and say, yeah, like that is unacceptable. And I have to put an end to it, whether it be I put an end to the friendship, or I put an end to what he's doing, like maybe they'll stay friends, because for some reason, guys stay friends, literally for all of their life, literally, they literally come out of the womb, and then they get buried under the ground together. Girls, different story. I'm like, okay, (laughs) you're out. Like, Guys, guys will never end their friendships. It is the weirdest no. thing I've ever seen. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. <laughs> I, I digress. Um, they probably won't end up being friends, but at least maybe they'll be a little bit more distant. Like you won't really, you know, have social media like DM relationship with him anymore. I don't know. Whatever the case is, I think he should be able to put an end to it. But you have to be sure to articulate it clearly. Don't don't step into that insecurity like mindset where then you start playing like the victim and you're getting like agitated and angry and mad and yelling like as long as you don't do it in that way and you just communicate like an adult like Alana just said it's you two versus the problem not you versus him that's a very big different like thing to differentiate like it should be you two together not you being mad at him and I think that she also said that in the email that she wasn't mad at him because it's not necessarily him doing it but just Remind yourself that this problem has a solution. That's what's Definitely. always the most important thing. It's not like he's cheating because that's a problem that does not have a solution. But this problem has a solution. And yeah. it's not the end of the world. And I think I, I have a feeling, because I'm trying to picture of this where like Jake and his friends, I have a feeling what is most likely to happen is it, you bring this up and you express like that you're uncomfortable and why it makes you uncomfortable. He's probably going to be like, oh, like I didn't. I, I don't he sends me this shit all the time. I don't think twice about it. Like, yeah. I literally don't care to see these pictures. He sends them to me like I'm looking at it for 0.5 seconds and then I'm yeah. not thinking about it again. Like, it's just like so passive. And yeah. I think hearing that that doesn't excuse the fact that it makes you uncomfortable and like the whole situation. But I think that just might calm you down. And, and that is my hunch. Like, boys will be boys. But like, he's pro- he probably literally does not care about it whatsoever yeah yeah he's definitely not like sitting there in bed thinking about like do a leap up like, yeah like, oh, okay <laughs> and, and you know what i have friends whose boyfriends or fiancés i know that they are and they like embrace them for that and they're like you know what like do was a great one like i'm all in <laughs> I'll, I'll buy him tickets to the concert <laughs> seriously all right good i think that was amazing alana this was so much fun where can the girls find you and connect with you and all the things? Yes. Thank you so much for having me. And also stay tuned because Victoria is coming on seeing other people and yes. that episode is going to be a must listen. So you can listen to seeing other people and life in progress wherever you listen to podcasts. You can follow on Instagram at seeing other people. You can follow me at Ilana Dunn and you can follow life in progress at it's life in progress. If you want to find me, I can be found. (laughs) It is not hard to find me. Thank you so much for this. This was amazing. This was so fun. And that is all we have for today, girls. So like she said, be sure to tune in to Seeing Other People because my interview will be out shortly. And that's it. So until next time, girls.